yin yang yoga session uh, my name's vicky if you haven't met me before this is socks she likes to eat plants um, today we're going to be doing a session um, without a mat as you can see the idea being that you can um, do this anywhere um, anytime it's about 40 minutes or so the first part will be yang so more active more dynamic with movement and the second part will be yin yoga. That's basically it. Do say hi so I know who's there. That would be really nice. Um, obviously we're not in a physical classroom but it's, it's really nice to know uh, who's with us. And we're just going to start by warming up. So if you just want to stand wherever, maybe you've got a mat, maybe you haven't. And just make sure if you haven't got a mat that you... Hi Sevin. If you haven't got a mat, um, but you've got as much grip on the floor as you can. So as you can see, I've taken my socks off because this floor is actually quite slippy. Um, so if you, you might want to do the same thing. <clears throat> so find your position and we're just going to start by shaking. Hi, Linda. There's someone else there too, I can see. Who is it? Please tell me who you are. <laughs> so just shaking the hands, shaking out the legs, in whatever way <laughs> feels comfortable. For you, it doesn't really matter how you do this. Just bringing a bit of movement, getting the circulation going, especially if you have been sitting all day, which many of us have. So just shaking it out. <clears throat> Two other people there, three other people there, but I can't see who you are. Let me know. Okay, and then we're going to just feel, just feel that movement, feel that energy in the body. Tingling perhaps in the arms, maybe in the legs. And then we're going to start by swaying. So just separate the legs a bit. It doesn't really matter how far hip distance-ish, and then just start swinging. We don't need to do this with the breath or anything yet. We're just warming up the body and just keeping it natural. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> and letting the arms swing. Please ignore the cat, she's got a bit of a thing for this plant. I don't know why. So she'll just munch away as we are. <laughs> she's actually a bit distracting, I think I might put her out. Keep swinging and you can allow the heels to come up and you can allow the arms to move up as well. Moving from side to side, maybe twisting a bit more, raising up the heels. Keep doing that while I put the cat out. Come on, babies. Come on. Keep moving from side to side. Bringing the arms up really quite high now, the shoulder level. I'm not doing very well today. Shoulder level. And then we're going to start doing figures of eight. So we're still swinging from side to side. But we're doing figures of eight, so the arms are following each other. Doesn't matter which direction, we're going to change the opposite direction anyway. And then keep lifting the heels and moving from left to right. We're just energising the body here. And then switch the arms so that they're going the opposite direction with the figure of eight as well. Doing it with the breath if you want. Adding a bit of a twist, a bit of more movement to the left and to the right. And then slowing down. Smaller and smaller arm movements. Until you come back to the centre. And once more just closing the eyes. Not once more, it's the first time I've asked you to do it. And just notice, just feel how the body is. And then we're just going to stretch, so palms together, legs are still separate, 
bending the knees and then just bringing the palms down and then stretching up, looking up. And then as you breathe out, again, palms diving down, bending the knees, diving up, stretching up. And then again, coming down, bending the knees, stretching up. This time, take hold of the right wrist and gently move over to the left. Press the right foot into the floor so that you can feel a stretch on the right side going into the arm. And then arms up to the centre, straighten the body, stretch up. And then the same on the other side. So pushing, activating the left leg, pushing the foot towards the floor to feel the stretch on the side of the body. Stretch up. And then the arms down by the sides. I can see some more people have arrived. Let me know who's there. It would be great. And then we're just going to move into everything is standing in the yang part. No down dogs because we've got no mat. Anyone who's here, um, as I said, just make sure that you've got as much, if you're not using a mat, make sure you've got as much grip on the floor as possible. Um, so socks, take them off, I would say. Okay, just want to make sure you can see. So, palms together in front of the heart. Bring the shoulders down, bring the shoulder blades towards each other so that you're opening up the chest. So we're feeling that opening in the chest. Okay, so breathe in, stretch up. Legs are wide, sorry I didn't say that. Breathe out, fold forward, okay. So we want to be feeling this in the legs, it may be the backs, we're looking for the inside thigh. So you might want to separate the legs a bit more and you might want to bring the heels out a bit as well. So see if you can feel that stretch on the inside thigh. We want to keep this position for all of the yang today. As you breathe in, straighten the back, shoulder blades together. Imagine that you're bringing the shoulders down, you are bringing the shoulders down, and then fold forward again. Now bend the right knee and walk over to the right. You can play with the left leg, it's straight, and again I want you to feel this on the inside thigh. So rotate the leg until you feel it on the inside thigh, and then stop and just breathe. You can activate the leg, feel it on the inside thigh. And then we're going to change to the opposite side. So walk over to the opposite side. Right leg out this time. Play with the rotation of the leg. And you can play with the rotation of the body too if you want to. Until you find a stretch on the inside thigh. Activate the leg. The toes can come towards you. Feel that in the leg. And then let's just do that a few times. Walking over to the right, lifting the toes up, walking to the left, lifting the toes up. Going to the point where you feel it on the inside thigh for you. That's going to be different for everybody. We're just switching from left to right. Three times each side in total. And then the last one to the left. And then coming back up to the centre, folding forward, going to flat back, folding forward. Right hand on the floor, gently bring the left arm up. Stretching the arm up and try with the right hand on the floor and the right hand on the fingertips. And then as you breathe in, push into the floor, lengthen the spine. As you breathe out, twist a bit more to the left. Breathe in, push into the floor, lengthen the spine. Breathe out, twist to the left. Breathe in, push. Breathe out, twist. Breathe in, extend. 
Breathe out, bring the hand down. We'll try it to the other side. Start with the hand flat, right arm goes up. And just while we're straight here, try with going up on the fingertips. How does that feel? We're looking for a twist here. Breathe in, stretch. Breathe out, twist to the right. Breathe in, push into the floor, extend the spine. Breathe out to the right. Breathe in, stretch. Breathe out to the right. Breathe in, extend the spine. Breathe out, hands come down. Once more, get a flat back, shoulder blades towards each other, fold forward. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, palms together. Okay, that's the first bit. Breathe in, stretch up. Legs are the same. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, get a flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, now this time, walk the hands to the right and turn both feet so that they're pointing to the right. So this back foot here, the heel is gonna be off the floor. The hands are on the floor, push into the floor so that the legs are strong. You're pushing into the ground, but the legs are strong for stability. On the next in-breath, we're gonna stretch up. And then breathe out, drop down. So that front knee is bent. Play with the position of the front foot if you need to. If you're feeling this in the knee, keep that back leg straight, but strong. Breathe in, arms go back. Breathe out, bend a bit further forward, big circles. Breathe in, arms go back, and you go back. Breathe out, coming forward, bend, dig a bit deeper in. Breathe in, up. Breathe out, circling forward. Breathe in, up. Breathe out, circling forward. This is the last one. So we're going back, arms up. This time I want you to move the back foot so that you move into warrior two. So obviously the arms as well. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, warrior two. Adjust the legs as you need to. Adjust that front foot if you're feeling this in the knee. Generally, generally people say it should be more of a right angle. Keeping the legs strong, breathe in. Breathe out, dropping down a little bit more. Feeling it on the inside thigh, breathe in. Breathe out, dropping down a bit more. Breathe in. Breathe out, dropping down. Breathe in. Back hand goes on back leg. Raise the palm, going backwards. Keep those legs strong. You want to feel a stretch on the side of the body. Breathe here. Keep the legs strong. On the next out breath, bend the elbow. Come forward onto the front knee. And this arm goes up ahead. Stretching forward. So again, you feel it on the side of the body, the left side this time. Keep the legs strong. And we're gonna move between the two. So breathe in, going backwards. Breathe out, elbow comes down, going forwards. Breathe in, back. Breathe out, forwards. I don't care how the arms are as you're going backwards and forwards, the movement, as long as you end up in these positions. Breathe in, going back. Breathe out, going forward. And then breathe in, back to warrior two. Breathe out, coming up. Breathe in again, coming up. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, go to flat back. Breathe out, fold forward. 
Breathe in, walk to the left side this time. Toes are facing to the left. Adjust the legs as necessary, pushing into the floor, but also bringing the upper body up. You can be on the fingertips, the hands. You can have blocks underneath the hands. Both legs are strong. And on the next in-breath, stretch up. And then as you breathe out, drop down. Adjust the legs if you need to. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop down. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, arms go back. We're going to circle again. So moving with the breath. Making big circles, going forward. Moving the body with it as well. And then on the fourth, we're coming back up again. Stretch up. Breathe out, move into warrior two. So check the position of the legs, of the feet. And then as you breathe out, just drop a bit deeper, bringing the shoulder blades down, bringing the shoulders down. And you should be feeling this in this front leg. And then again, we're going to go backwards. So palm goes up. And we'll just stay here for a couple of breaths. Keep that front leg bent. Back leg straight and strong. And then the same thing going forward. Elbow on the thigh. Right arm goes up. Move that right arm so you can feel a stretch on the side of the body. Stretching the arm out. And then backwards. And forwards. Backwards. Forwards. Backwards. Forwards, back to warrior two, coming up, both toes going forward, fold forward, go to flat back, fold forward, and then stretching up and bringing the palms together. So that's something you can play with by yourself. You can make that into more of a flow in your own time. But now we're going to move into the yin. So just let go of the hands and just bring the feet more towards each other. If you wanted to shake out the legs again here, then please do. You're probably feeling this in the legs. And we're going to start with dangling. So just fold forward and then take hold of the elbows. And what we're looking for here is a stretch on the backs of the legs. And also on the back. So play with the position so that your feet are comfortable, but also so that you've got a good stretch in the back of the legs. And I would also suggest playing with the weight. So just move the weight a little bit forward, a little bit back, and find the point where you want to feel the stretch. You'll notice as you move a bit forwards and a bit further back, it moves to a slightly different place. So where do you want it? Where you found that you want it? Then stay still. And we'll be here for another minute. So allow yourself to relax. Maybe your breath is deeper from the yang. Just go with that. 
Just notice how your breath is different. If this is too much of a stretch, then by all means, bend the knees a little bit or maybe come up a bit. That's fine as well. And obviously what we're doing here is we're using the weight of the body for the stretch in the backs of the legs. The gravity that's bringing the upper body down is pulling on those muscles and the surrounding connective tissue. So the more you allow gravity to bring you down, the more you relax into it, then the more stretch you're gonna get. This is how it works with yin. Being receptive to what's going on can actually make the poses more intense for good or for bad. Okay, so what we're going to do is move down into a squat. So, bend the knees and just gently come down. Now with yin yoga, as we stay in the poses for several minutes, then you don't want to be straining, well, you don't want to be um, activating the muscles. So if you would like to put blocks underneath the heels, if your heels are up here, I would suggest it because then you can relax deeper into the pose um, or cushions or whatever. So I have blocks, my heels are up off the floor. I'll be too wobbly, I'll be straining, I will be activating the muscles unless I use blocks. That's my body, that could be your body too, it may be, it may not. So just remembering yin, we're trying to avoid activating the muscles so that we can get deeper into the body. So you've got a couple of options here. You can either put the hands in prayer between the legs, as long as that's, again, not activating the muscles too much. It probably will be a little bit, but that's okay, a little bit. Or, this is separating the shoulder blades, or if you'd like a stretch on the back again, then you can just put the hands behind the head. And again, what we're doing here is we're using the weight of the body and gravity to give us that stretch. So try with your hands in different parts of the head, which gives more stretch which brings the head down more, where do you want it? And we'll be here for a minute. And then we're actually gonna go back into dangling again. joys of teaching in your <laughs> okay so as I said we're gonna go up so if you've got any blocks underneath hands on the floor straighten the legs coming back up into dangling and maybe you could try a slightly different position this time maybe you might want to separate the legs a bit more folding forward you can try the position of the heels. So maybe putting the heels out. Where are you feeling the stretch now? Putting the heels in. Just noticing how it's slightly different depending on the positioning of the feet. So try a different one. And then take hold of the arms. 
and we'll be here for another two minutes. Allowing gravity to bring you down, weight to bring you down, to stretch the legs and stretch the spine or the back, the back muscles and connective tissue. Keep the muscles relaxed. As much as you can. It's inevitable that we're going to be using them, but we want to try and keep them as relaxed as we can. Okay, so we're going to come down again. So hands on the floor, bend the knees. Bending the knees. And just a brief squat here, just as a counter pose this time. So you can put the hands on the floor. Now let's do it for two minutes again. Put the blocks underneath the heels if you want to. And maybe try a different position with the hands this time if you had them together last time. Try the hands on the back, on the back of the head. If that's too much stretch, then just let the arms loose. This is a great pose for decompressing the spine. Keep the body relaxed. Close the eyes if that's comfortable. Maybe just for the last part, just really small movements. Just rock back and forth, micro movements, really paying attention. Feeling how their stress moves to slightly different places with these small, small movements. A little bit of yang. Okay, so then we're going to come down onto the floor or the mat if you have a mat. And we're going to start in square pose. So square pose, we begin right leg in front. We'll start cross-legged. In fact, this may be more suitable for you, we'll see. Our target area is the outside right hip, the side of the right leg, the glutes. So one or all of those areas. So square pose, you bring the feet forward, you bring the shins forward, and then you fold forward. Don't worry how far you can fold, it is unimportant, as long as we're feeling a stretch in the outer right hip. If you aren't feeling much of a stretch, 
I suggest playing with the position of the legs so you can bring the feet a bit further forward. Try that. You can separate them, or actually that I'm bringing them together there, or you can separate them. So you're bringing the knees closer together. So play with that if you haven't got enough stretch or you've got too much stretch, actually. And if you find when you're folding forward that this isn't really working on your knees, then again, you can always put something underneath the knees to support them. So when you found your position, fold. As I said, it doesn't matter how far forward you're folding as long as you are feeling that stimulation in the outer right hip. And we are also, of course, stretching the back here. Allow yourself to relax. We'll be here for around two minutes now. And always, for anybody who is new to yin yoga, but this of course applies to any form of exercise, always listen to your body. We're looking for stimulation in the body. We want the body to be working in a yin way, in a soft, receptive way. We don't want anything that obviously is not right. So if something is pulling in one particular point or stabbing or feeling electrical, anything that actually does not feel right, then you need to back off or come out. Do, do take responsibility for your own body. If you're feeling this in the knees here, for example, then support them or come up and just sit with your legs out in front of you or maybe even lie. We're all actually gonna come out of this now, however. So then just push yourself up to the center. We're gonna move directly into Dia. So the front leg stays where it is. The back leg, the left leg, swing it round so it's still bent, but the foot is going behind the left. Can you see? Yeah, behind the left hip. So we are also looking for um, a stretch in the same area, in the outer right hip, the glutes, the, the side of the right leg, but it may be in a slightly different place. So you're gonna fold forward over this front leg. Now again, listen to the knee. If the knee isn't feeling right, you might want to play with the position of the front leg. Also, if you're not really feeling much stretch in that target area, then I would also suggest playing with the position of the front leg. The back leg doesn't really matter so much here. Something else you can try is you can play with the position of the torso. You can move it to the left. You can move it to the right. It doesn't really matter where it is. And if you find actually that you're getting a stretch in a different area, which is very possible, but you like that stretch and that feels good and what you want, then that's, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> then stay. There is no right or wrong. Okay, and then we'll stay here for two minutes as well. 
If your heels are digging into the floor, obviously you can put a blanket or a cushion underneath. And you can be on your elbows, resting on your elbows, or maybe you can rest your forehead on your hands. Or maybe you might prefer actually to be a bit further up on your hands. That's also fine. It's different, for different bodies. Okay, so in the next out breath, then we're going to come gently, gently back up to the center and just move into a neutral position, whatever that is for you. You can sit with cross legs or you can put the legs out in front of you, which might be a better option, seeing as we've bent our legs so much. Hands on the floor behind and then just feel the difference between the right leg and the left leg. How does that right leg feel? What physical sensations are going on there now? Rebound is not a time for, it's not dead time. I hope you don't think that in yin yoga. It's actually really, really important to notice the effects. It's like a mini Shavasana, actually. So, if any sensations have passed, now we're going to move to the other side. So, Cross the legs with the left in front of the right. I'm actually going to put something underneath my ankles this time. They're digging into the floor a bit. I don't know about you. So left in front of right. And then either move your bum back or your shins forward. So that you're kind of in a square position. It depends on your legs actually. And then fall forward. So as I said, spend a bit of time playing with the position of the legs so that you're getting a mild to moderate stretch in the right side of the leg and the, sorry, the left side of the leg and the left bum area. That might mean pushing the feet away from each other, bringing them closer to each other or moving them further away from the body or closer to the body. And then when you found your position, the arms can go wherever is comfortable, to the sides, to the fronts, wherever. And we will stay for two minutes.
If you still feel like you haven't got enough stretch, then your other option is to move the body a little bit to the left or to the right. The same as I was saying for deer. But always when you make an adjustment, just give it a little bit of time. Make the adjustment, relax into it and see how it feels. Because once you've moved, initially when you move, you might not actually feel it. You may only be able to feel it once you've relaxed into it. So give it time. Okay, so slowly come up. This time, swing, gently swing, the right leg behind into deer. Folding forward, maybe straight forward, maybe slightly over the leg. Play with the position of the torso. Are you feeling the stretch? Remember to relax into it. Is that working for you? Is that the right amount? Play with the position of the leg if you need to, making it into more of a right angle perhaps, or less. And then relax into the pose, which may feel very different on this side. And again, we'll stay for two minutes. Just notice for this last 30 seconds or so, are you holding any tension in the body? Have you, have you automatically started tensing something? See if you can release. So, on the next out breath, coming back to the center, pushing back up to the center, and we're going to move directly into Shavasana. So, you choose what you prefer Shavasana lying on your back, or maybe you would prefer a seated Shavasana. You choose. Just get comfortable, get warm, spend a bit of time adjusting yourself. 
just allowing yourself these last few minutes. Forty-five minutes is up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you here, but please stay for at least a couple of minutes. Shavasana is a really very important part of a yoga practice. Rest is where we can take in the effects of what we've done. So please stay in your Shavasana. Thank you for joining me. Remember, you've always got my yin yoga class tomorrow if you'd like to come and do some more yin. And I'm also doing a workshop on Sunday. Just giving you some subliminal messaging here while you're relaxed. <laughs> you can find them both in my events page. Take a look. Now I will stop selling and I'll allow you to relax. So just enjoy. Hope to see you soon. Namaste.